shall be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty works, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our praises. As your people declare your mighty works, thus be the Lord God. Well, good morning, church. It's great to be with you again, and happy Father's Day to all you wonderful daddies out there. You know, this week has been one of those really, really wonderful weeks for me. Let me explain. First of all, my daughter and our three grandkids come down from St. Louis to visit us, so that's just wonderful. Secondly, my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law, they come from Kentucky to also visit us, which was wonderful. We had a house full of people. It was just great. And then on Thursday, which was my 64th birthday, I was privileged to baptize my brother-in-law right there in the baptistry, which was just an awesome celebration. And then now get this, today itself is a three for me. And I say a three for like this. First, it's Father's Day. Two beautiful children and wonderful grandchildren and all that. So God's blessed me. And secondly, 52 years ago today, on June the 20th, 1969, I gave my life to the Lord. So this is my 52nd uh, anniversary of my spiritual birth day, which is awesome. But catch this, the third one. Today, 28 years ago today, June the 20th, I became the minister of this wonderful congregation here at Western Hills. God has blessed me richly, and I just want you to know that today. So here's the deal. You know, we're going to sing some songs or have some songs for us, and join in, sing along with them. I hope that you do. We're going to take communion together, 
And then I'll be back in a few minutes and I'll have another message about fathers today. But you mothers, you stay in tune as well, okay? God bless. Talk to you in just a few moments. God bless you and happy Father's Day. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd, watching over my soul. My soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever I go. And when the winds blow, He is my shelter. When I'm lost and alone, He rescues me. And when the lion comes, He is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. We are His children and He is our Father. Watching over our souls Great is His love for His sons and His daughters Watching wherever we go And when the winds blow He is my shelter And when I'm lost and alone He rescues me and when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. And when the winds blow, he is my shelter. And when I'm lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me.
remember. You ever think about the word remember? You know, it kind of sounds like somebody who was a member and now they joined again, they remembered. Or, you know, you lose an arm and they reattach it, they remember. I'm not sure what it has to do with memory and remembering things. <laughs> but it is important. Memory in itself is, is amazing. I know a lot of you have memories from your childhood. And for some of us, that was a really long time ago. Yet this marvelous thing God gave us in our brain, we can remember things like that. There are a lot of memories we have that are good memories. There's some memories that we keep inside of us that are bad memories. And we don't like to recall them, but they keep coming up every once in a while. There are things that we do to help us remember things. We have holidays on the calendar to help us remember dates. We have holidays to remember people that were important. We have lots of things to help us remember things. We have birthdays to help us remember that we're getting older every, every year. But Jesus, he gave us a simple command a long time ago. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul is writing to the Corinthians there and he says in verse 23, For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given him thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And here we are, these nearly 2,000 years later, and we still remember Jesus. We have no direct memory of Jesus. What we have is through the Bible, through his example, through the teachings as they've come down through the ages. And that's what we want to do now is remember him, remember that sacrifice that he gave on the cross of Calvary, his body, which his bread, bread represents. Let's go to our Father. Lord God, we're so thankful for Jesus, and we remember him at this time, Father. He was God in flesh, and yet he did not resist your will, Father. He went to the cross willingly. He sacrificed his body in our stead. He was sinless. We are sinful, and he did it for us anyway. This bread represents that body that was given there, and we're so thankful, and we remember him and his sacrifice. We pray in his name. Amen. In verse 25 in the same chapter, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Pray for the fruit of the vine. Father, we're so thankful to you for that blood that was shed at Calvary. We're sorry it had to be done, but we know that was your plan. We know that that blood that flowed from Jesus, the one who was sinless, that blood covers our sins, Father, and makes us appear holy and blameless and spotless in your eyes. And we're so thankful for that. We're thankful for Jesus. We're thankful for that he was willing to sacrifice himself to follow your plan, Father. In his name we pray. Amen. Also at this time, we always want to remember how God has blessed us materially. And we have out there in the foyer a basket where you can leave your contributions, whether it's for the work here at this short or for mission work. We want to thank God for everything that he's given us. We know that nothing that we have, didn't, we don't earn it ourselves. He gives it to us. Our homes, our jobs, our friends, everything we have is from God. Let's remember him now. Father, 
We're so thankful to you for everything that you've given us. You have blessed us in this nation so much, Father. We take it for granted a lot of times, Father. We pray that we will stop doing that. And remember that everything is from you, Father, everything that we have. We now want to return a portion of that to you, Father, for this work to go on at this place, to help lead us and others to Christ, that we can all have a home in heaven in the end. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome back. I'm glad that you're back with us as well. But, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Isn't that a beautiful verse? 
I think it's a beautiful verse to get started off with today, actually. A young boy came um, into Sunday school one Sunday. He was late, but he was always on time before. And so the teacher, you know, just basically asked a question, son, uh, is everything okay? Is everything just fine? He says, oh yeah, everything's just fine. Well, why were you late? She said. And he simply said, well, my dad was, I, I was going to go fishing, but my dad said that I needed to go to church instead. Oh, this is wonderful. The teacher was very impressed by that, of course, that the father was trying to teach the little boy that it was more important to go to church than it was to go fishing. Is that what your father was doing? She asked the young boy. And he goes, no, not really. He just simply said, well, you see, my dad just said that we didn't have enough bait for both of us, so I needed to go to church. <laughs> Whatever the case is, I'm glad that you're here today, okay? You can go fishing after this message. All right. You know, in growing up in my life, and I, I have a lot of stories, and you've heard a lot of them, but some of you haven't. I mean, again, we're having people tune in from all over the country. Montana got, a, got an email from, I think it was Montana, and uh, um, th th that to me is just awesome, and thank you for doing that. But and most of the emails I get are good, so uh, keep the good ones coming, keep the bad ones to you. No, that's all right, whatever. But in growing up in my life, pretty much uh, it was all about sports. I was uh, actually I was a pretty good athlete, and uh, so it was all about sports. And so therefore, the people I looked up to were the sports players, as many kids even do today, of course. They were my champions, if you will. But I've dis I discovered as I got older and older, I realized something. I realized that my, the true champion of my life was actually my dad. You know, he didn't play ball with me, and you know, he didn't go to a lot of my ball games or anything like that. It just wasn't in his DNA to do that. He didn't care if I win. He was proud of me when I won and proud of me even when I, was, I lost, but that I played and was part of that. He didn't have a problem with it. But I realized that my father was my true champion in life. I miss him much. He's with the Lord now. And, and I miss him much, but I just, uh, I just think of him often, especially like on a Father's Day, of course. And I suppose most dads want their kids to grow up to think that they're the hero of their life. So what I want to do today is I want to give you some things that how you can stay a champion in the life of your child and how that works in your life by following God, of course, in His teaching. Becoming a champion in the kingdom of God starts with knowing who's actually in control. And so dads, I just want to encourage you today, and this is not only, of course, for uh, the dads, but for parents, and, and how that is that we can be these, if you will, champions for our children, but really teaching them about the Lord and who the true champion is, and it is Him. So let me give you three things today to take with you to show your children, to teach your children, and to be this example for your children as champions. Um, so number one, let's just go ahead and get started and we'll kick this off. And number one would be a good example. In the scripture, Matthew chapter 5, and you know the scripture, I'm sure, it says, let your light so shine in front of men. This could be people, this could be, and yes, your children. That's so why I put that in there. Then they will see the good things you do and will honor your Father who is in heaven. You see, dads, one of the things I want to try to get across to you is that you are a teacher. You, 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 you represent this in their life, something special, and you can teach them. You cannot pretend in, in your life to be something on Sunday and somehow put your um, Sunday stuff in the closet, if you will, and then just live the way you want to live because you're actually teaching your children something in their life. Are you teaching them? about who's really in control. That who really is the champion of your life, or is he, I might ask. The psalmist uh, David said in Psalm 71, O oh God, you have taught me from the earliest, my ch earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. Do you constantly tell your children about the wonderful things God has done for you in your life? How it is that He's blessed you throughout the years. Find stories in your life. They, they may be not very good at first, but how God worked through that in your life, or you worked with it and with God in your life, and how it came to be. This is what He's talking about here. 
He said, Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the highest of heavens. You have done such wonderful things. Who can compare with you, O God? Make sure that you let your children know that nothing compares to God. Nothing compares to God. The God that you serve. Because they're seeing you and you are teaching them something. Joshua told all the people, especially to his family, Look, God is the center of who I am. And Joshua chapter 24. He is my true champion. Because he led by example. He was the one that led by example. And you will too. Are you leading by the example that God wants you to lead your children by? Now, I, I believe that the, the greatest gift that a parent receives from their children, you know, today you're probably going to get some socks or underwear or, or you know, a, a weed eater or whatever it might be from your children, and you'll have a cookout and so on probably. But I believe the greatest gift that a parent receives from their children is the gift of them following the Lord. And the way that happens in your life, my friend, is that you give them the great example of you following the Lord in your life. So I want to encourage you in that. Now, because we get older, we realize that someday this is all gone. Why is that the greatest gift? Because we know that this world is going to pass by someday. And, and, but yet we can be this example for our children that one day when we pass from this life to the next life, we can be with each other for all of eternity. Because you, you love your children, you always want your children with you. Sure you do. Then be the example for them that God is your champion. God is the true champion of life. God is the goal, the, the one that we seek to please in our lives. Why? So that you can be and set that example for your children so they can come to know the Lord. So that you can be together forever in eternity. Listen, I miss my dad greatly. I miss his humor and I miss just his, just being around him and his wit in life. And You know, he wasn't an educated man, but man, he had great wit and he just was funny to be around. And I know he loved the Lord. He loved his family and he loved me. And I was so thankful. And I miss that. But I am excited to know that because of his example, my parents' example to me, left me with this legacy that, that I want to be able to pass that to my children and my grandchildren as well. So, so be that example is number one. Number two, I would simply say, be that good teacher. I mentioned that early on. I meant to say example. But to be a good teacher. You are a teacher whether you carry the title or not. Uh, you may not be the school teacher as many of you are, but, and that's great, but you are a teacher. You're a teacher from the moment you bring little Johnny or Joey or Susie or Mary or whoever it might be into this world. And you are the one that is to teach them. That's precisely why the world wants to raise them for you. Did you know that? It's exactly right. So that they can teach them their ways. And their ways, the world's ways, are not God's way. And so they want to reach right in there and grab your children as young as they can get them. They want to drag them right in. They're going to teach them exactly what they want. And the ways of the world are not the ways of God. And so there's a battle that will always go on there, of course, in all our lives. But you are responsible. We are responsible as Christian parents and fathers to be the ones that teach our children. The number one problem in America today is is not what is in our headlines that they're trying to cram down your throat. To me, the number one problem in America and the families is their fatherless homes. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, that's a fact. When the fathers aren't being fathers to their children, and there's so many, just look at the statistics. Just Google it, and it'll just shock you. You be the good dad. Don't you run out. You stick with it. When even when it gets tough, you stick with it because your children need that in their life. If not, they're going to search for it in all the wrong places, as the song goes. Titus 2, chapter 7 says there, In all things show them how to live by your life and by the right teaching. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And, and the world 
generally will always push in the wrong direction. Just look at the world and how full of the stupidity that we have today in our world that they're trying to push to our children. They're trying to teach your children things that are against what God has given us. And I could go on for a long time there. That's why it's important for us to get our children and to teach our children. To teach them about the goodness of God, the love of God, the mercies of God. The salvation is found through Jesus Christ and teaching them that. It's important and I know that that's what you want. We used to sing the song to our little children. You remember this? Oh, be careful little mouth what you say. Oh, be careful little mouth what you say. You remember that, don't you? Maybe not. But we as parents need to probably sing it more like this. Oh, be careful, big mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, big mouth, what you say. For the children all around us are looking up to us. So be careful, big mouth, what you say. Now, we might laugh at that a little bit, and I, thought, I find it a little funny. But in all of that, I know people that will act all churchy-churchy, if you will. You know? They just come, they come to church and yeah, everything's this and that. But, it's, but when they leave and they walk out the doors there, they often find themselves around innocent little ears and around their children. Awful things. Awful, terrible things that they hear. And you don't need to be talking about certain things around those children. Listen to what Jesus said. This is how strict it is. But if anyone causes one of these little ones, Matthew chapter 18, if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Those are strong words from Jesus himself. So be careful, big mouth, what you say, right? Be careful. We truly plant the seeds into the hearts of our children. We talked about that a few weeks, just these seeds that we plant. But we truly do that. And we, we truly plant these seeds into the heart of our children. And it can be good seed. So be careful what you're saying. Number three, and I like this one, is be a good coach. You know, being an athlete growing up, and I say an athlete, I mean, I was, I was okay in a lot of areas and sought out in other areas. Um, but there were a lot of good coaches in my life that I am thankful for, that poured into my life some good things. And I've been around some sorry coaches, to tell you the truth. Ones that didn't care. That, that just, you know, they just played weird. And they talked very ugly. And they, they didn't pour into my life good things. But for the most part, I would say most of the coaches that I had in my life were good coaches and they poured some great things into my life and I'm thankful for that. Dad, it's okay to let someone coach your kids in soccer, or football, baseball, basketball, or dance, or whatever it is that they're involved in. It's okay to allow them to teach or, or to coach them in certain things. But you must be, we must be very careful of who is coaching your child spiritually in the spiritual arena of life. And be real careful with that. Because once again, the world will not coach them in a direction that surely you don't want them to go in a direction of the world, do you? I mean, you want them to learn how to throw that fastball. You want to learn them how to slide into second base correctly. Or maybe to be able to guard someone. Or be able to kick the bar, a ball far. Or be able to do a routine. Or whatever it might be. You want them to teach them that, but you don't want to teach them the way of the world in the spiritual arena, do you? That's left up to you. Because so much is at stake. How much is at stake? I mean, you may not win the championship and get the trophy to put on them. But, but, but my friend, let me tell you, we're talking about a matter of life and death. Eternal, eternity with God or eternity in a place that you don't even like to mention. Think about it. If you teach them that they are champions in the Lord, if you coach them that they are champions in the Lord, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you teach them those things, then when this life is over, you can celebrate with them for all of eternity. Again, isn't that wonderful? 
First Timothy, you see it on the screen there for you. Physical training is good. <laughs> I need some more of it. Okay, a lot more of it. But nonetheless, physical training is good. But what else? The training for the godliness is much, 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 and I should put a whole bunch of more muches in there. <laughs> Better. Why? Benefits. Promising benefits in this life and the life to come. You see, not only eternity, but here and now, there's benefits for being instructed or coached in the Lord of our life. Dad's what a ball player does on the court or on the field or whatever the case might be reflects of how well he's coached. You know it. You can sit in the stands and you see it and you can just say, man, that kid's not disciplined. That coach is not doing a very good job of teaching them routes or, you know, just the fundamentals of the game. You can tell that pretty quickly, can't you? What a child does is a reflection of how well you coach him. But how your child does in the spiritual arena is important as well, isn't it? It is vital that you coach your children correctly so that they too can become these champions for Christ and in Christ. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. Listen, I, 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 by, by no means am I perfect in, in the regards of even raising our children. You try your best, you do your best. But try your best and do your best is the encouragement that I want to give you. Because children, when they get a certain age, they can do whatever they want to. Again, the pull of the world can be strong in them. And some of you struggle with that because you realize that the world's pulled a little bit stronger right now. But don't you give up praying for them. Don't you give up on them. Because the Lord's still working on them. And let Him continue to work on you as well. Don't you get down on yourself because your child has made a decision that you didn't want them to make. But you be an encourager, especially if there's, you still have small children and grandchildren. You get around them and instill in them the goodness of God and the love of God and coach them in a powerful way. Colossians chapter 3 says, whatever you do, did you catch that? Whatever you do, there's nothing more important that you will do in your life than to instill into your children the love of God. Nothing. Oh yeah, but I gotta make this. Uh, I gotta make this living, and I gotta get this living. And I gotta have this, and I'll pass on to them this great inheritance. But if you don't pass them God, what have you done? You see. But he says, whatever you do, work it with all your heart. Are you, my friend? It's just an evaluation time. As working for the Lord, not for human masters. You see, this is a godly thing that we're talking about. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. It's talking about heaven and what we might get there, yes, but instilling what you're doing now, instilling the love and coaching your children correctly. It's important. Your, your children notice what's important to you. It is true. So I'll just ask you a question. And this could be to the, to the fathers and the mothers and and. All of us. But if I were to ask your child, if we were to be able to ask your child, what is the most important thing to your dad? What's the most important thing to your parents? What would your children actually say? That's a tough one, isn't it? It causes you to reflect on some things. If it's not what you would like for it to be, if you, you still have time, get with it. Yeah, but my killed kids are grown. Well, that's okay. Call them up today. Or when they call you today to say, Happy Father's Day, just tell them. Say, you know, I didn't do everything right, but I want you to know that I love the Lord, and, and, and I pray for you, and, and, and I love you. Instill that now. Just to start, start pushing those seeds over there now. And let God take care of the rest. Would you do that? So seek ye first the kingdom of God. You seek it first for yourself and then you can pass it down to your children. If you're not seeking God first, you're not going to pass it to your children. If you're not seeking God first, what are they going to be doing? You see, it just takes one generation to forget about God and then it just kind of disappears. Well, that's not really important. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. 
It's important. David Livingston was an explorer who paved uh, the way for the missionaries to take the gospel into Africa. And I love this story because after some time, his missionary board wrote him saying, they said, Livingston, some people would like to come and join you on your missionary trip. What is the easiest road to get where you are? His reply was stunning. He said this. He said, if they're looking for the easiest road, tell them to stay in England. For I want people who will come even if there's no road at all. You see, my friend, faithful fathers help their young learn that life's filled with opportunities, but it requires courage and strength and commitment to the Lord. And the father that teaches, the father that explains and shows by example, and the father that, if you will, coaches the one in the Lord, that sets them on the right path. Train your children, teach your children about the Lord that you seek first in your life. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you for all those wonderful fathers out those those are, that are in the homes. And then, Father, just you know, quickly in the parents or the mothers that have just, they don't have the father at the home to take care of the children. Give them an extra measure today because they're playing a double role. But for us fathers that are that have children and we love you, Lord, help us to build upon that, that fact that we're seeking you first. Help our children to see it in us by the examples that we live and showing them. Help us to impart to our children and our grandchildren the love that we have for you first and the importance of that, the value of that. And then help us, Father, as fathers, to coach them correctly. Be gentle and compassionate and kind and forgiving all the things that you are to us. May we be also to our children. We thank you, Father, for today. Bless us, and care for us, and watch over us. But thank you for being our God and our Father, a good, good Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name in all things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, my friend. And again, to all you fathers out there, happy, happy Father's Day. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One, Jesus, my Redeemer. Son and leave.
Thank you.